Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India This is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering, IIT Guwahati. And what we were discussing, we were discussing about the protein production strategies in different types of host. In this uh, module, we, uh, what we have discussed so far, we have discussed about the protein production strategies in the E. coli as a system. Then subsequently, we have discussed about the yeast uh, as an as an host, which is actually the uh, uh, basic uh, uh, eukaryotic host and uh, unicellular eukaryotic host. So, the manipulation as well as the protein production in the uh, eukaryotic system such as yeast is the simplest system. Then subsequently we have discussed about what is the disadvantages of use uh, using the yeast as an expression system and then subsequently we have talk about the insect cell line as an expression system in that we have discussed about how to clone the uh, proteins into the baculo expression systems, how to screen them, how to select and then ultimately how to uh, generate the uh, recombinant uh, viruses which you can use to infect the insect cells so that the insect cells will over express the proteins. And at the end we have also discussed about how to uh, re retrieve these cells whether the cells would be cytosolic in nature or the, the protein what you are going to express in the is uh, going to secrete into the media of the uh, insect cells uh, and uh, both of these strategies have the different requirement in terms of the media what you are going to use for protein production. So now continuing the discussion about the different types of host, today we are going to discuss about the mammalian cells as an expression system. So mammalian cells, there are different types of mammalian cells which are being used for protein productions. So, mammalian expression system is the most complicated eukaryotic expression system which people are using for protein production as well as the, for asking the questions or studying the transcription as well as the translation of the foreign gene or foreign proteins. Sometimes they are also looking for what will be the impact of or what will be the functional uh, role of a particular protein. In, the, in those cases, they overexpress that particular protein into a cell and then ask what will be the uh, ph physiological as well as the phenotypic changes occurs in that cell. So similar to all ad other expression systems, the protein production in the mammalian cell system can be achieved with either from a vector based such as the extra chromosomal DNA and once you uh, produce, protein the produce from the extra chromosomal DNA it is going to be transient because the extra chromosomal DNA is going to be degraded in due course of time or some cases you can actually sequence you can integrate into the genome through homologous recombinations to establish the permanent cell line. So the expression from the permanent cell line will be intact, it will going to express uh, as long as you grow these cells. The expression from a transient or the permanent cell line can be from a constitutive as well as the inducible promoter. As we discussed in the yeast, as in, in, the, in the case of yeast, you have the choices of either using the uh, constitutive promoters or the inducible promoters in the, in the case of mammalian cells as well. Irrespective of the expression mode in mammalian system, the different basic steps which you are required to produce the protein are as follows. The first step is that you have to clone the foreign gene in mammalian expression vector. We, uh, in, in our pre previous lecture, we have discussed different types of mammalian expression vector which are available for cloning the foreign gene into the vector. Then once you generated the foreign, uh, this recombinant uh, clone, then the second step is you have to transfect the cells, uh, cell line with the recombinant construct 
where this one also the transfection of the mammalian cells also we have discussed in detail where you can use either the chemical method or the uh, uh, um, uh, lipofactamine or there are three to four different approaches what we have discussed in the case of mammalian expression uh, mammalian cells and the transfection of the mammalian cells. Then once you once you transfected the cells you have to screen and select the transfected cells and ultimately you have to culture these transfected cells and then you have to do the protein production. So, let us continue with the mammalian inspection system and understand all these steps. So, in the mammalian expression system you can use different types of cell lines for protein production. These are not the exhaustive list of cell line what you can use, but these are the different cell line which are very very popular in terms of protein production as well as performing the experiments uh, into the uh, into the labs. So, you have the uh, 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 different types of cell line and they are being derived from the different origins. For example, you have the MCF7 which is a breast cancer cell line, you have the HT1080, you have EH927 which is the endothelial cell line and then you have the J774A.1 which is a macro cell line. I have given the list of cell line here also in which you have the CB1 cell line which is actually from the kidney, then you have the COS7 cell line which is from the fibroblast origin, then you have the NIHTT3 which is a fibroblast. Then you have the CHOK1 which is actually the ovarian uh, origin, then you have the J774A.1 which is of the macrophage origin, uh, HELA which is a cervical cancer cell lines, then BHK21 which is a kidney cell line and HEK293 which is a kidney cell line. And among these cell line, why we are talking about these cell line because you have to choose these cell line as according to the origin of the foreign gene. For example, if I have to over express a uh, cytokine gene into uh, into the for protein production i would prefer to use the immune cells in those cases i may prefer to use the j774 which is a macrophage cell line similarly if i have a protein production I, I would like to just use some mammalian cells then i will go for those cell line which are easy to propagate easy to grow and the manipulation of these cells in the cell culture would be easy in those context you can use the either the COS7 cells or the uh, CHO cells because these cells are uh, very easy to grow in the mammalian uh, into the mammalian media and these cells are easy to manipulate compared to all other cells which uh, and and uh, the other third cell, third cell line what you can also use is HEK293 which is actually uh, very very easy to manipulate very very easy to transfect and very easy to propagate within the media. Uh, as we discussed, uh, you can have the two different mode in which you can uh, get the protein expression, either it would be a transient expression or it would be a permanent expression. So, transient expression would be the expression where the expression is going to be very high, but it would be a very short period, which means if you transfect the cells with the DNA expressing the protein, it will going to give you the protein production until the 72 after the post transfection. After 72 hours, the, the extrasomal DNA or extra chromosomal construct which you are going to transfect into the cell is going to be degraded by the cellular machinery and eventually the protein production is going to stop. Transient expression system is used to screen the cDNA libraries, isolation of a particular cDNA clone expressing surface antigen or to test the applicability of the recombinant construct going to be used for permanent, trans permanent expression. So, before you go for the exhaustive exercise of permanent uh, expressions, you also want to test whether the construct what you have prepared is going to express and give you the protein or not. For those kind of expression as well, you always use the transient expression. But in general, the transient expression system does is not being used very extensively for protein production. It is always being used to answer the uh, research related questions. For example, if I overexpress this particular protein, what, how and what 
way it is going to change the morphology as well as the phenotype of that particular cell. For those kind of experiments, you use the transient expression. But if you want to do the protein production, the, the transient expression system is going to be very, very costly because you are not going to get the protein production post 72 hours. This means after every 72 hours, you have to do another round of transfection, which means for you have to isolate the, uh, the DNA, you have to uh, make the supercoiled uh, uh, high quality DNA which will going to transfect into the mammalian cells and then you also have to use the transfection reagent. These transfection reagents are going to be costly. So, if you do multiple rounds of uh, trans, uh, transfections and try to use those cells for protein production, it is not going to be economically viable options for protein production. For that purpose, people always used to prefer you, you, um, making the permanent transfections or permanent expression system. So, in the permanent expression system, the permanent expression system you are going to use and you will use the gene and integrate into the chromosomal DNA. Once you integrate that into the chromosomal DNA, the protein will going to be expressed along with the or the number of protein uh, gene or the ones as, to, as soon as the pro cell will divide, you are going to have the more number of copies of that particular gene. So, it is actually uh, uh, going to continue along with the cell division. So, that is why uh, even if the cells will, uh, will divide, it is you are not going to lose the DNA and that is why it is called as the permanent uh, expressions. Uh, the most crucial step in the permanent transfection is the establishment of permanent expression system for a gene is to integration of that particular gene and that it depends on the number of times or number of frequency of integration into the genome. So, uh, you have to achieve that by simply screening the cells on multiple rounds just to see that it is getting integrated into the genome and that is why the permanent expression system or development of the uh, cells which have the permanent expression is a time consuming as well as the labor intensive exp uh, exercise. But once you are done, you are sure that this particular protein is going to be expressed from these cells lifelong. You do not need to do another round of transfection or selections. And so, uh, initial steps are time consuming, but subsequently it will get, it is going to pay you in terms of uh, reducing the cost of the transfection reagents or uh, making the DNA as well as it is going to reduce the manpower requirement to do these jobs. In simpler words, the permanent transfections depends on the recombination frequency instead of transfection efficiency. So, let us start with the transient expression and understand what are the different steps you have to perform to make the protein under the transient expression systems. So, as I said, the transient expression system, the expression is high, but it is short lived. The cells transfected with DNA express protein until 72 post transfections. Transient expression system is used to screen cDNA libraries, isolation of a particular cDNA clone expressing surface antigen or to test the applicability of the recombinant construct going to use for permanent expressions. There are multiple steps required to transiently express a protein in cos 7 cell lines. So, in this particular example, we have taken the cos 7 as a cos 7 cell line to show you that how to do the trans transient expressions. But uh, for other cell line also, the, the, the steps are going to be remain constant except that you might have to optimize or uh, standardize these uh, steps uh, depending on what cell line you are using. Uh, suppose some cell line you are using which are not adherent cell line, non-adherent cell line, then you have to change little bit, but uh, more or less the steps are going to be remain constant. So, to, the procedure uh, can be applied to other cell line, but with slight modification. The steps which you are going to use for making a transient expression are as follows. So, in the first step, what you are going to do is you first plate the cos 7 cells into a plate, okay. And then what you have to do is the first step is 
you take the super coiled high quality DNA and do the transfections. So first is to clone the foreign DNA into the appropriate mammalian expression vector to obtain the recombinant DNA and then the uh, as we discussed in the past also the transfection efficiency is maximum for a super coiled circular DNA. So you have to purify the recombinant DNA by a mini prep to prepare the high quality super coiled DNA. Once that is done, then the second step you have to do the transfection and once you are done with the transfection, uh, so in the second step what you do is you seed the cos 7 cells in DMM media which is actually the standard media recommended for growing the cos 7 cells uh, at, a, at, a, at a confluency of 20 percent in 100 mm dish. Uh, once the cells are adhered and they are ready then you do a transfection of these cells with the recombinant DNA which you are going to use uh, with the transfection reagent. You have the option to use the different types of transfection reagent which we have discussed in the past. You can also use the virus mediated or the bacteria mediated DNA delivery as well. So these are the different methods. Once you are done the transfection these cells are now being transected. Then what you have to do is since uh, all of these recombinant DNA is going to have the selection pressure you have to select these cells. So that is the third step uh, you have to uh, select these cells and uh, suppose in this case we have taken an antibiotic. So what you have to do is you grow these cells in the presence of antibiotics. Uh, as soon as you put the antibiotics the most of the cells which are not being transected are going to die and then you are going to have the cells which are being uh, uh, transiently transfected. So these cells are expressing your protein and along with that it, these cells are also expressing the antibiotic resistance genes as well. Now what you have to do is you, uh, you these cells you uh, are ready to use for transient expressions. In the transient expression you have the option whether you want to have the protein onto the surface or the cytosol or you want to protein to be expressed or secreted out into the media. Depending on the conditions you can use the different types of media. So imagine that if the protein is present on the cell surface or the intracellular protein which means that the protein is associated with the cellular fractions then in that case you. Uh, so transfect the cells are allowed to express the protein for another 72 hours, remove media and then wash the cells with PBS and de detect the presence of protein on cell surface or in cell lysate by activity assay or the western blotting. So uh, once you have these transfected cells you centrifuge them that will give you the cellular component as well as the supernatant which is actually the media. The cellular component you can lyse or uh, suppose the cells are present on the cell surface then you can take these cells and, ex and uh, use the facts to detect the uh, presence of antigen on the cell surface. Otherwise you can lyse these cells and detect the protein into the intracellular or cell surface protein using the western blotting or the activity assay. But if the protein is expressed and secreted into the external media then what you have to do is uh, if the protein is expressing uh, secreted out then you wash the cells uh, with PBS and add serum free media. Okay? It will allow to secrete the protein for another 72 hours. Then what you do is harvest the media, remove the dead cells and debris by centrifugation and filter the media by a 0.45 micron meter. So if, you, if the cells if you are putting the uh, protein into the secretory pathway the cell the protein will present into the supernatant in that case what you do is you wash these cells with the serum free media and then incubate them into the serum free media these cells then will secrete the protein into the supernatant you centrifuge you recover the cells you centrifuge and that will give you the cellular component as well as the supernatant. This supernatant you can pass through with to the 0.4 micron meter so that you can remove all the dead and damaged uh, cells and you will only going to get the clear supernatant. Uh, once you have done that then you can detect the presence of your protein in the media either by activity assay or by western blotting. So then you have the security protein and you can do the western blotting or the uh, activity assay for presence of your protein.
So, this is all about the expressing the protein into the mammalian expression system under the transient expression. But if suppose you want to make the permanent expression system, then you have to first generate the cells under the permanent transfectant and then once your cells are ready, then you can use them for protein production. So, under the permanent expression, the permanent expression is of a gene is possible if it will be integrated into the chromosomal DNA. The most crucial step to establish a permanent expression system for a gene is the frequency of integration event rather than the number of DNA uptake. In simpler words, the permanent transfection depend on the recombination frequency instead of the transfection efficiency. The stable transformants are selected by a selection marker either as an antibiotic or the oxotrophic factor or a negative selection with an inhibitor. All these uh, the selection of the cells we have discussed in the past where either you use the antibiotic which is going to be a positive selection or the oxotrophic method where the media is not going to have the particular type of nutrients. So, the cell will not be able to grow, but once your recombinant DNA will be there, if that recombinant DNA is going to provide the nutrients and that you can use even on the nutrient deficient media. And the third is the negative selection where you are going to add the chemicals and that chemical is going to kill the cells. But if the protein is the chemical is being inactivated by the presence of your particular recombinant DNA, then the cell will survive. Uh, uh, so, the, but the question is this, this screening has to be done for a prolonged period of time to ensure that the uh, recombinant DNA is getting integrated. You have the different steps which you have to follow for making the permanent expressions. Uh, what are the different steps? So, in the step 1, you first clone the foreign DNA into the appropriate expression vector to obtain the recombinant DNA. This step is exactly the same as we have discussed for the transient expressions. Uh, you know that the transfection efficiency is going to be maximum for supercoiled circular DNA. Then you purify the recombinant DNA either by the mini prep or uh, in a high quality supercoiled DNA. Then what you have to do is seed the cells in DMM media supplemented with 10 percent FBS at a 20 percent confluency in 100 mm dish. Then the third step you have to do a transfection. So, transfect these cells with a recombinant DNA using a transfection reagent. This uh, step number 1, 2 and 3 are going to be the identical what we have just discussed for the transient expression system. Now, in the step number 4, you have to do a selection of the transfected cells and once you have selected the transfected cell, then you can take a small aliquot of these cells and test the expression of foreign protein with the western blotting. In addition, since we are looking for the permanent expression, you also have to see that the gene is getting integrated into the genome. Uh, that you can check simply by performing a sudden blotting with a radioactive probe derived from the gene of interest. If you remember, we have discussed in the past how to generate, how to prepare the radioactive probes. Either you can use different types of method or different types of approach we have, which we have discussed why we were discussing about screening of genomic library as well as the cDNA library. So, the similar kind of approach you can use to prepare the, ra the radioactive probe of the sequence which is uh, from the foreign gene and then that, that you can use in a standard sudden blotting techniques to detect the, uh, the, uh, the genome and uh, if it is going to give you the signal that will indicate that the your gene of interest is being integrated into the genome. So, these are the 5 steps you are supposed to do. We are not going to discuss about step number 1, 2 and 3 because these are we have already discussed in the past in terms of the transient expression. We are going to discuss about the step number 4 about the selection of transected cells in the case of permanent expression. So, in the case of uh, permanent expressions, the step number 1 is that you first plate the cells at a 20 percent confluency. Step number 2 you do the transfection so that the cells are getting transfected. Then you are going to put them under the selection pressure either it is antibiotic, oxotroph or the negative selection. Once you do that, 
you are going to see that some of the cells are going to survive, they will not going to die because these are the cells which are getting transfected and these are the cells you have to select. So, in the 48 hours after the transfection, split the transfected cells in a selection media containing antibiotic and allowed to grow for another 4 days, which means once you are done the transfection, you take out these cells and plate it into another dish which contains the antibiotic and let them to grow for another 4 days. In these 4 days, uh, the uh, lot of cells are going to die and uh, uh, what you have to do is every day you have to gently wash the cells with PBS and observe that you are going to have the discrete colonies or not, which means uh, uh, this, this you have to continue by gently washing the cells so that all the dead and the uh, damaged cells you should remove from the dish, otherwise these dead cells are also going to damage your uh, transfected cell as well. Now what you have to do is, since you got these dishes, what you have to do is, a cell culture dish has a, 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 a plate like thing and on from the back side what you have to do is, you take the marker and then you encircle what are the places you have the colonies like as I am doing now, right. So, that you have to do from the back side. So, delineate the boundaries of each colony with the marker from the back side of the plate. Now, remove the media okay, and put the cloning rings. So, cloning rings are actually the ring like structures and they are being, so once you put them onto a particular uh, plate, they will go and get sticks. Okay? So, if suppose this is the plate and you are going to put the cloning ring, the cloning ring is actually going to make this as like a well. So, once you put the cloning ring, the whatever you put inside the cloning ring, suppose this is your uh, colony what you would like to isolate, the cloning, once you put the cloning rings and the cloning will ring will make this particular area impermeable or uh, the, the media will not going to leak out. Okay? Then what you have to do is, you have to add the 100 microliter Tipsy EDTA. So, into this you are going to isolate this colony simply by putting the 100 microliter of Tipsin EDTA. So, you fill this cloning rings with the 100 microliter of Tipsin EDTA. Once you do that, the cells which are being adhered, they will come off and present into the liquid. Then you wash the colony with the PBS and transfer this single colony into another 24 well dish and let it be growing. So, allow it to grow and become 80 percent confluent. Once it becomes 80 percent confluent, then you do another round of selections. Okay? Uh, so, then what you do is, so you have put it into 24 well dish okay? and you allow that to go for 80 percent confluency. Now, what you, once it is getting confluent, then you take out these cells and put it into the 6 well dish. So, initially you started with the uh, uh, 24 well dish, you can uh, you, and then you transfer these cells to the 6 well dish in the presence of selection media, which means, means you can still have the antibiotic pressure and allow that to reach to 80 percent confluency. So, once it is reaching to the uh, uh, 6 well dish 80 percent confluency, you can take out from here again and let it grow into the 10 centimeter dish in the presence of the selection media and that actually is going to give you the permanent mammalian cells. Now, whether you have the permanent mammalian cells or not, that you have to test into the uh, subsequent step. So, in the uh, step number 5, you take the small aliquot of these cells and test the presence of foreign protein with the western blotting. So, what you have to do is take the small amount of cells and prepare the cell lysate and then you do the cell lysate and use it for the western blotting and the cell lysate you can do and then you do the western blotting to check whether the foreign protein is present into that western blotting or not. In addition, since we are talking about the 
in uh, the permanent affection you have to also check the integration of this gene into the genome. The standard technique is sudden blotting. So, you can you prepare a probe for that foreign gene and then use that foreign gene to detect the fragments into the sudden blotting. It gives you the signal that will confirm that the uh, gene is being integrated into the genome. So, this is all about the transient or the permanent expressions and within the mammalian expression system you have the option either to go with the constitutive expression or to the inducible expressions. So, in the constitutive expression just like as we discussed for the yeast cells you have the option to uh, use the promoters of the housekeeping genes and as a result the expression is non-inducible because it is going to use the housekeeping promoters and the protein production would be in proportion to the number of cells which are present and as a result the expression is going to be non-inducible. Uh, so, the protein production starts with the growth of the cell and as a result it is proportional to the cell mass. Whereas, similar to the yeast where we were using the methanol as an inducer, you can also have the inducible expression system. So, in the inducible expression system uh, is very useful for the expression of a toxic protein or the protein with the pleiotropic or non-specific effect. Which means, if you are over expressing a toxic protein or the protein which have a very very adverse effect on the cellular physiology in those cases what you are going to do you can use the inducible promoter system and uh, what will happen is once the you reach to a cell mass then you can add the inducer and that actually will allow the cells to over express that particular protein eventually because the protein is toxic in nature it is going to kill the cells or it is going to uh, adversely affect the growth of the cell. But at that moment it may not be an issue because you already have a very very high cellular density of these cells and that actually will give you very high production of the proteins. So, let us discuss about the inducible expression system. So, in the inducible expression system, inducible expression system is useful for the expression of a toxic protein or protein with the pleiotropic or non-specific effect. The tetracycline controlled inducible system is, uh, is given in this uh, diagram. In this particular system, you have the 7 tandemly arranged tet operators. And these tet operators are being up placed upstream to the minimal CMV promoter and the transcriptional activator uh, TTA gene. In the another set what will happen is the target gene is replaced with TTA gene in the presence of tetracycline. So, what will happen in the tetra in the presence of tet so you grow these cells in the presence of tetracycline the binding of TTA is blocked to the tetracycline operator which means uh, as long as the tetracycline is present it will not going to allow the operator to bind to the uh, TTA operator tetracycline operators. Consequently what will happen it will cause because you uh, your operator will not going to uh, the tetracycline operator will not bind that is why it is not going to drive the production of the target gene as well as the expression of TTA or the target gene. But once you remove the tetracycline, okay, so in the absence of tetracycline, the low level of TTA binds to the operator and that actually will enhance the expression of TTA which in turn will stimulate the further amplification of initial signal the transcription activator TTA produced in the absence of tetracycline eventually stimulate the expression of target gene. Which means once you remove the tetracycline the low level of TTA bi will bind to the operator and that actually will stimulate the production of the foreign gene as well as the TTA uh, protein. This TTA will go and bind to the uh, another round of operator and since you initially there will be a low level of TTA, but once the uh, it will going to produce 
more amount of TTA, it is going to generate very inducible system and that is how it is going to induce the production of protein from the target gene. So, this is the called as the tet on tet off tet, uh, inducible promoter system or inducible expression system in the mammalian expression system. We have discussed about different types of expression system. We, we started with the very simple expression system such as the E. coli expression system and we have discussed many aspects or many approaches what you can use to over express the tetracycline expression system. Then subsequently we moved on and discussed about the uh, yeast as an expression system which is actually the simplest expression system in the eukaryotic system. And then we have also discussed about the insect cell line as an expression system and uh, by the end of this lecture we have also discussed about the mammalian expression system. We have discussed about how to, gen how to produce the transient expressions or how to generate the permanent expressions into the mammalian expression system and at the end we have also discussed about the uh, constitutive as well as the inducible expression system in this in the case of mammalian expression system. So, with this I would like to conclude our lecture here. In the subsequent lecture we are going to discuss about the recovery of the protein from the uh, over expressing cells and then subsequently we are going to discuss about how to, uh, how to recover the product, how to verify the product and how to characterize that particular product because as you remember we, we have to use these products for downstream biotechnology applications. So, all these product has to be characterized using the standard biochemical as well as the biophysical parameter associated with these products and once these products are being verified on these uh, uh, parameters, uh, then only we can put them into the application part and at the end of this course we are also going to discuss about the applications of these uh, uh, bio, biotechnology products and with this we would like to conclude our lecture here. Thank you.